Somebody in the community had asked about this. They actually saw this. I made an animated GIF from it, but they saw this on our website, the marketing website, and they wanted to know, like, how do I create this drag and drop? So a few different things happening. One is the object kind of seems to rotate a little when they pick it up. Like you see it, it rotates, and then they drop it, and then it disappears. So they want to know how to do that. So that's what we'll cover. And then we'll kind of talk about some of the nuances with that, which is always the, the main purpose of these tips and tricks is just to kind of dig through the tools and learn a little bit more about them. So I'm in Storyline here. I went ahead and I've got the source file. You can download that and play around with it. Mine doesn't look as nice. Um, so I've got this. We'll look at it. Um, I've got an apple and a kiwi. And we're going to drag the apple to the the blender here. And so you can see uh, when I drag the apple, this one gets a little, I made it so it turns a little and gets smaller, right? Now, when it does that, you can always change that. So it's doing that. And then when I drop it on there, it's going to disappear. Now, a couple of things you'll notice if I replay this here. One is where it turns, like I may not want it to change shape right here. I might want it to change shape when I get over the blender. So we'll we'll talk about how you would do that. And the other thing is when I drop it, you're going to see it kind of ends up down here as it disappears, see, which looks kind of weird, right? It's like like I dropped it on top of the, the mechanism there, right? And then I've got the kiwi. The kiwi I didn't make smaller. I just had it rotate. And then same thing, I drop it. So um, how do we do that? It's pretty simple. And one of the things that's really cool is once you kind of play around with some of these ideas, in this case, you know, we've got the fruit disappearing. But there was an example David built. Um, let me see if I can – I had that right here. This is an example David built a few years ago, and it's kind of the same concept. Um, so you've got these food items, and then, you know, they're draggable, right? So you can see there's – you know, they look one way. And this one, they end up looking completely different. So when I drag it over, then it changes, and it looks like it belongs on the plate. So it's visually, it's really nice uh, treatment with the drag and drop. It seems it's very elegant to me. Um, and then when I drag it back, you can see it, it goes back uh, to its normal state. So how is all that done? Let's um, build something from scratch here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and grab my two fruit here. I should probably only need one because we just need one. So I've got my fruit here. I'm going to drop it here. So got my apple. And you should always title things. So I'm going to just call this apple instead of apple one. And then I'm going to call this Blender. It's always good to make sure that you're typing names in because it always makes uh, makes it a lot easier when you have to troubleshoot. So what I want to do is basically I'm just going to drag and drop this onto the Blender. So it's, that's the essence of the activity. Um, and so in there's a few different ways to do this. I could do the drag and drop onto the Blender. I'm going to do a drag and drop onto the Hotspot. And, and the reason is it gives me a little bit more control over how I can manage the hotspot and what I can do. Because when I click on the blender, it, this right here is the bounding box. And uh, so when I go to drag and drop something on there, you know, the center point is right here. This is why when it disappeared, it kind of went to the center point right here. And so if I drag on the blender, I'm kind of constrained by the dimensions of the object. If I create a hotspot to drop it on, then I can control, you know, how that object drops, how it appears after I drag and drop it, if I'm having it appear. Um, in this case, we're having it disappear. But instead of using the shape, I'm going to use a hot spot. And then um, now in, th in this demo, you notice I made the hot spot really big. So what happened when I dragged the apple here, as soon as it hit the hot spot, the trigger was set to change the state of this apple. So... I didn't want it really happening that soon. I want it to happen when it gets over the blender. So I just did that so we could see the difference. So we're going to actually uh, put a hotspot over just the blender area. And now you'd want to make sure when you're instructing the person, you want to say, you know, drag this object over the uh, blender container or whatever that's called. I don't know. Uh, whatever that's called. Um, but you want to you want to drop it there. Otherwise, you know, they may drop it over here and it's not going to work. So you want to be explicit about what, what they should do with the object. So we're going to go ahead and just insert a hotspot. 
which we have right here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the hot spot. I'm just gonna go. It doesn't have to be you know super perfect either. So we just do this. And now I've got a hot spot here. I'm gonna I'll call this HS for hot spot and then Blender. It's always just again good to title it. So what we're gonna do now is we have this object. And what we want to do is we're just going to have it, instead of rotate, we're just going to have it become smaller, right? Or you could make it look like it, if you wanted to do like David did, where it's a completely different image inside that state, maybe you just make it look like chopped up apples, right, and that you're dropping in there. But we're just going to make it smaller for this demo. So I'm going to go into my apple, and I'm going to create a new state. And then I just come over here, create a new state. Um, we'll just call this uh, drop. Right. Um, so that's our drop state. And then in the drop state, I'm just going to make it smaller. So I'm going to make sure I'm inside the state and then I'm just going to drag this and resize it. And you can you can play around with it. You can see the bounding, the corner, you know, the top corner here. So you can kind of play around with how it looks because you'll notice uh, when you grab it, uh, the object may you may grab it here but then the object is kind of floating. So you'll play around with that. So we've got our drop right here. And now what we want to do is we're just going to change the state of that object um, when I drag it over the hotspot. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. Moved off screen here. What do I want to do? I want to change the state of the apple and I want to set the state to drop when the user, and we're going to say it's way down here the object is dragged on so the apple is dragged onto the hotspot blender and said okay and let's go ahead and preview this and you can see now I get here it changes right now you can see oops now you saw it disappeared because I actually had an exit animation on here let me turn that off I was playing around with this earlier all right so let's redo this again because then we can talk about kind of the movement. So see, once I change it, it hits the hot spot right here, right? If we look at the apple, the apple's bounding box is here, but when we, when we, uh, let's, let's do a shape, because this is the stuff that this nuance to this. So that's the shape of the bounding box, right? And I'm gonna come into, the apple here and control V let's send this to back and you can see the bounding boxes here right so when I drag the apple as soon as the bounding box hits this thing here it's going to change so I may want to play around with it and say okay well I'm going to might even put it way over here right and let's see what this does. We'll just keep the bounding box on. I don't know if that extended the bounding box or not. So let's see. So I see it, it gets a little closer, right? So you can play around with that. We're going to go ahead. Oops. And we'll move this back here just on the edge. Let's get rid of this. So those are kind of the nuances when you're when you're doing this. Probably it doesn't matter that much, but you can see it gets a little closer. And then I'm going to drop it on here, right? <clears throat> now, right now, we only have a drag thing to change the state of this. You'll notice when it snapped back that it's kept the state because we had changed the state. We don't have another trigger that changes it back, uh, which I'll explain in a second. So the next thing we need to do is just need to drop it onto this object and what we're going to do is we're going to do that exit animation so we wanted to leave the screen so i'm going to add an exit animation to this let me come back here we're going to add an animation we're going to do exit we'll just do shrink and so it's going to shrink out off the screen uh, so what i want to do when we think about entrance and exit animations when an object has an exit animation on it when it disappears from the screen is what triggers the exit animation so if i change the state of this object to hidden then what's going to happen is it's going to trigger the exit animation 
So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go to animations. I've got my exit animation. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a trigger on here. And I'm gonna say change the state of the apple to hidden. And when it gets changed to hidden, that's gonna trigger the exit animation. When the user drops, my mouse is not working on okay. When the user, oh, I don't know why my mouse. When the user, oh, it's my mouse just isn't able to get that on this monitor. Okay, when the user drops the object on the target, so the object is gonna be the apple and it gets dropped on the blender. Hit okay, let's go ahead and get rid of this rectangle. All right, so we got two things happening. When I start dragging it and it touches the hotspot, it's gonna change the state to that smaller apple. And when I drop it on here, it's gonna change the state to hidden, which would, which should trigger the exit animation. So drag it, change state, drop it, triggers exit animation. And then that's basically the effect. And you can play around you know, with the placement of the object, placement of the hotspot. Now there is something else to consider, and that's this has an exit animation. So this is set to five seconds. I'm just gonna set it to three seconds. If I'm reading the screen, I'm, so I'm the user, I'm reading the instructions about what I'm supposed to do with this apple and this blender, and the timeline's gonna keep going, watch what happens. This has an exit animation on it, so when it hits three seconds, it's gonna exit. So I don't want it to exit, obviously, because it's going to take me probably three seconds to read the instructions, and now all the objects are gone. So to fix that, all I'm going to do is just put a uh, pause trigger on here. So I'm going to create a new trigger. And what do I want to do? I want to pause the timeline of this slide when, and we'll say when the timeline starts of this slide. So basically, and this works assuming you don't have other things on the screen. If you have things coming on the screen, like maybe instructions and things, then you would want to pause them after all of that. But you want to pause the timeline so this way uh, the exit animation is not triggered. And now when I preview this, it's just going to, it can go on for three, 10, you know, two hours, doesn't really matter. Nothing's going to happen. But as soon as I drag this over, it changes the state. And then when I drop it, it's gonna change the state to hidden, which will trigger the exit animation. And there you go. And that's the essence of that. There's one other nuance to this. I'm changing the state of the apple when I'm dragging this over here. Uh, some people will use a down state because when you click on the object, it goes into a down state. And then uh, the way you would do that, let's go ahead and grab the Kiwi. Control C, we'll put it on here. And then it's just a different way to do it. I like doing it with the hotspot because it gives you more control. But what I can do is I can come into here. Let me make sure I got I have an exit animation. Okay. So we're gonna do here is let's edit states. We're gonna create a down state, which is a pre-built state. So basically it's when you click the button down, hit a down state, and then I'm just gonna now this is another nuance. Since I'm working with the original object, I don't have, I can only resize it, but I don't have the means to rotate it or anything. So if you want to rotate it, just do Control X, and that removes it, but it's still on your clipboard, and then do Control V, and then it's pasted in as an object, and then I can rotate that. So maybe I'm going to rotate it and do this, right? So now that's my down state. So what happens here is the state gets changed as soon as I click it, see? Here I have to drag it to the hotspot. Here I do this, you know, I, I click it and it changes the state. And there's, you know, pros and cons to all of that. You know, this may not work as well on like a mobile device or something like that. But um, I like, you know, even though this is a little smoother looking when, you, when you're clicking the down state and then you go to drag it, I do like having the hotspots because it just gives you a little bit more control. But if I have a down state and I release it, it goes back to normal. With this one, because I have a trigger that changed the state, I have to have a trigger that changes the state back to normal. And so what I did on this one here is I just put this like countertop background on here and then I just have a trigger 
that when this is dragged over the hot spot, it changes it. Let's let's look at that. When it's dragged over the hot spot, it changes the oops, it changes it here. But when it's dragged over the marble, it changes it back. So then uh, this way, um, it it doesn't get stuck in that state. Um, it's a little bit nuanced to that. It's a matter of playing around and kind of figuring out what works for you. And then you know that blender activity was cool. On the a couple of things I'll point out. One is, you know, you've got the download. You can play around with this and and kind of look at that. You can rewatch the video if it was a little fast. I know sometimes people are new to this, and so this all these tips go by pretty quickly. But that's okay. You can always watch the. You can kind of get a sense of what you can do, and then watch the videos later. But a couple of points. One is, from the Blender activity, you know, this is one way to maybe do this type of activity. Uh, David had a, a e-learning challenge on creating like a little smoothie. So there's a lot of Blender type uh, interactions. So that's a good one to look at because you know we we kind of get set sometimes. And I see this a lot in the community. People get set on how they're doing something. And then seeing other examples, you start to go, oh, wait a second, I don't even need to do this drag and drop. I could have actually built this a different way. So uh, look at those examples because it's kind of a blender type activity where you're making a smoothie. So a lot of similar type interactions. So that may give you some ideas about diversity in terms of interactivity, um, especially when you start talking about accessibility, right? Because building a drag and drop interaction that's accessible is a little bit more challenging. And then the other thing is on the um, the the example David did. Um, again, you know, it, it, there's all sorts of cool ways you can do that. I, I've always liked this example just because it, you know, it looks like this food belongs on the plate, and those cookies and onion rings look uh, really good. I'll go ahead and grab that hamburger as, as well. So um, anyway, that's it. If you have questions, you can always jump into the uh, community and ask, um, and then play around with the tools. That's This is how we learn this stuff, right? Like we answer questions in the community, figure how things work, play around with the tools, learn some of those nuances, and then um, and then take it from there.